I really wish that this was one of those videos where I walk around half naked and I do a full glute spread so I can show you my booty hole when it's all flexed, but it's not gonna be one of those videos. So not to disappoint, but I'm just gonna be talking about my experience. So go ahead and put away your lotion bottles, you dirty duckling. No, God! I, well, I see you. <laughs> so when did I first start working out? It started at the age of 13, when there was a joint partnership between my middle school and the feeder high school so that they could teach us about the work ethic of joining the football team in two-a-days. But I'm gonna be honest with you, I just messed around and every single time I went to these joint workouts with the high schoolers, all I did was bench press every single time. So I didn't start taking lifting seriously until I turned 15 years old because I played lacrosse and football and puberty and muscles make all of the difference and gives you all of the advantage on the field. But the story goes much more deeper than that. You see, I was gifted and talented in athletics, but I was severely undersized. I was that kid that was quick as a sack tap, but I weighed 100 pounds soaking wet. I digress. What fueled me to hit the gym more consistently? What happened is, during a lacrosse scrimmage, there was a kid that weighed like 210 pounds, and he laid his shoulder into me, and I went tumbling, I went flying into the wind. And he did that unnecessarily because he went out of his way to make sure that he shouldered me. I was out of bounds. And as I was flying away, he said these words to me. <laughs> Hit the weight room, son. You weak. And that really resonated with me because when I participated in sports leagues as a child, everybody had a child body. But as I went into high school, there was a difference between the athletes that worked out and the athletes that did not. I did not work out. Instead, I practiced all the time. And so as the story goes, I took weightlifting as my elective during my sophomore year of high school. And the rest is history. And the history is this. I would get big, then stop lifting and get small. And then get big and then get small because I stopped lifting. It was a repetitive cycle that I put myself through. Fortunately, muscle memory is a real thing. So every single time that I pick it back up, lifting, the gains come right roaring back. And that brings us to the present day where I'm in my 30s and I'm in a profession where I walk like 20,000 steps or 10 miles a day. So I have every excuse in the book when I come home from work, I'm tired, I'm hungry, my legs are sore. You know that feeling when all you want to do is just lay down and play on your phone for two hours and go to bed? Yes, I am absolutely human and I also have those feelings and urges. But when I start to feel lazy, that's exactly when I force myself to go to the gym and get a workout. I don't even allow my brain to make excuses or even to think about it, about how sore my feet are. I just go. I change clothes, get my butt into my car seat, and I drive to the gym and I go through those doors and I start lifting. I go to the gym first and then I complain if I want to. And in my experience, all right, so the first thing that I noticed is an increase to my self-esteem and a confidence boost. And I'm not talking about it from a conceited sense, but in a happy and healthy type of way. Because a few years ago, man, I went through a really rough time in life where I was chronically ill, day in, day out, week after week. And after being sick for months on end, my body disintegrated and I became an ugly mess, no exaggeration. And what was missing from my life of equation at the time was working out and a healthy diet. But those are two ingredients that are implemented into my day-to-day -day life now. And the second thing that I noticed is the weird body pains and aches disappear. So whenever I drove my car longer than 30 miles or approximately like 30 or 40 minutes, I would get intense lower back pain. But one thing that I noticed is that the more deadlifts that I did and increasing the weight, uh, the less pain that I would feel. And as of today, I can literally drive for hours on end and not feel any pain in my lower back. And not only that, I have weak knees, okay? So I have pain in my knees. And one thing that I noticed is that the more squats that I did, and by putting more plates onto the barbell, the less pain that I start to feel in my everyday life. And now I'm at a point where the pain scale 
on my knees is like a two out of 10. The third thing that happened is that I had to size up my entire wardrobe. Because prior to working now consistently for six months, I was wearing a size small in men's for my tops and bottoms. A small. You're dirty. I'm not talking about it like that. I'm talking about it because of a body frame perspective. Because if I wore a medium, I would be swimming in my clothes. So I had to change up my entire wardrobe because yes, I have started to gain muscle mass. And now I wear a size medium at the top and at the bottom. And as I have this opportunity to redo my entire wardrobe with size mediums, I am trying to buy clothes that are now just black or gray because there's such a thing called decision fatigue and I'm trying to eliminate just that one thing at the beginning of the day in the mornings and I don't have to think about it. I can just throw on a black outfit or a gray outfit. And the fourth thing that happened, I alluded to it, I'm starting to feel stronger all around. And I'm not talking about it from a subjective sense, but in a tangible way, right? Every two weeks or so, I'm able to increase the weight for almost all of my weights. And I know that it's unrealistic to think that noob gains will last forever. And as I increase the weights for all my lifts, I feel the strength within my body and my core just getting better and better. So I feel more firm and less likely to just snap if I fall down the stairs, for instance. And the fifth thing that happened is that I'm more cognizant of what I eat. Prior to working out, I would just eat whatever I want. And that was probably the worst thing ever. You would think that's paradise or living out your dreams. For somebody like me, when I'm allowed to eat whatever I want, not a good result, right? And so the only supplement that I take right now is whey protein. Reason being is that supplements are very expensive. If you know what I'm talking about, eating healthy is a lot more expensive than eating conveniently. So I'm understanding that trying to eat healthy and being cognizant of my macronutrients is increasing my budget for groceries. And the last thing that happened is that my tolerance of being uncomfortable has amplified for the better. So sometimes when I take a shower and the water gets cold because it runs out of hot water, I'm able to withstand that a little bit better. Or when I'm sitting in traffic, I can endure it a little bit better. And I think the reason being is that when you work out, especially for myself and my own experience, it's painful and it sucks. And if I'm able to persevere through those 10, 12, 14 reps, my body trains my mind to develop mental fortitude. And so withstanding uncomfortable situations is becoming easier. All right, so what would I do differently? So I made this decision to start working out during the pandemic. And it's not in an ideal situation, but it's my reality. And so prior to going back into the gym, I was doing calisthenics at a half-assed effort, maybe like once every two weeks. I wanted to go to the gym earlier, but being a germaphobe and thinking about all the germs that are all over the equipment right now, just, it scared me. And it took a while for me to overcome that sense of being dirty. I digress. As I started to devote myself to lifting weights and only weights, I have noticed that I have completely disregarded any body weight exercises. Just the other day as a benchmark, I wanted to see how many push-ups that I could do and I struggled, I mean struggled, to get to even 20 push-ups. And on that note, there are some people in this world that say that time flies. But those are the type of people who have never got down on the floor, on their knees and elbows, and tried to do a plank for a minute. Because you would understand how long a minute really is once you start doing a plank. So one thing that I would have and will do differently is instead of just letting my body rest in between lifting workout sessions, I'm going to do small sets of planks and push-ups and pull-ups here and there. I'm not talking about like a full-out sweat-breaking workout, but like maybe before dinner or before going to bed, just doing a quick plank. And so to wrap it all up, am I fulfilled? Am I satisfied 
Once I began this quest to get back into shape, it's been therapeutic for me. I'm happier, healthier, stronger. My self-esteem and confidence is finally back to the levels where it used to be. So I don't see a reason why I would stop working out now. Unless the guy who's lactose intolerant keeps releasing whey protein farts near me at the gym. You know who you are, I'm talking to you. And that takes me out because I get pink eye. So I don't have an end goal in mind, but I just know that I'm not satisfied yet. I want to push my body to its limits. And so that's where we are. And I can't wait to update everybody after one year of lifting.